Andrew, who's investing in cryptocurrencies? Let's go back a step, noting the lack of regulation for cryptocurrencies around the world, and that the investment opportunities have historically been limited to retail investors, i.e. the general public. So, as popularity for the asset class, or tech stock, which you might prefer, has risen over recent years, so too has the access to trading platforms through easy-to-use mobile apps available to most people around the world. In October 2020, PayPal announced that its customers will be able to buy and sell Bitcoin and other digital currencies using their PayPal accounts. PayPal, having one of the largest merchant networks in the world, is a huge catalyst to the adoption of digital currencies globally. And this is especially good news for the unbanked and countries that are subject to sovereign risk and failed central banks like Zimbabwe and Venezuela and countries with strict exchange control or limited access to fiat cash. This supports entrepreneurs in far-flung places and megacities, like Lagos, for example. Since its birth, Bitcoin has gone through many different cycles, and we at Currency Hub believe that 2020 marked the beginning of the institutional adoption phase. We saw a number of listed and unlisted global companies purchase Bitcoin with some of their excess cash reserves. Case in point, in mid-2020, during the pandemic, the institutional investors began looking for alternative sources of alpha and means of diversification from the equities and bonds and gold. And this marked the acceptance of Bitcoin. As a result of regulation, large financial institutions cannot own Bitcoin directly, and they are therefore restricted to accessing the crypto theses through the acquisition of publicly listed and privately owned companies who themselves have the ability to invest in Bitcoin. Consider companies like BlackRock, Morgan Stanley and Vanguard owning shares in the likes of MicroStrategy, Square and PayPal, who are openly stockpiling huge amounts of Bitcoin, providing an entry point by circumnavigating the regulatory restrictions. But the regulation is opening up. Consider too that Goldman Sachs now includes cryptos on their derivative exchange, and that these are some of the big institutional names and big moves in the right direction for crypto enthusiasts and confidence in this asset class. Andrew, describe the crypto investment opportunities. So, the primary investment strategy for the retail investors is in their belief that Bitcoin or Ethereum will go up over time. So investing in Bitcoin is essentially a strategy to invest in an asset which has characteristics like gold and offers investors a store of value as well as diversification, while investing in Ethereum is more of a play on investing in blockchain technology. Here you simply subscribe to an app, purchase your crypto and hope it goes in the right direction. If you want to spread your risk, you could invest in a type of ETF fund through an app that bundles the top performing cryptos and these have become quite commonplace with allocations beyond the ubiquitous Bitcoin and Ethereum into various altcoins and stablecoins. For the more experienced and technically minded, you can perform arbitrage, whereby you look for price inefficiencies between the currencies and the exchanges and trade in and out, trying to make a profit. But this is best left to the experienced investors, many of whom using high-frequency bots, algo trading, which comes into its own risks. Recently, we've begun to see a rise in staking which is crypto speak for earning interest, on the underlying digital asset. And here investors are essentially lending money to credible exchanges that support crypto traders looking to borrow digital or fiat currency to express their views on the market by taking both long and short leveraged positions. Then there are specific crypto products that invest in DeFi, decentralized finance, which is enabled through blockchain, primarily on Ethereum, opening up all manner of disruptive financial services this is a particularly interesting space and moving exponentially. And lastly, for the more sophisticated investors, there are around 500 crypto funds, of which there are around 150 long-only type products and 50 crypto hedge funder funds. And these invest in multiple crypto firms and strategies to reduce their risk by capturing most of the upside and reducing the volatility significantly. At Currency Hub, we've been managing an arbitrage strategy since 2017 which is unique to South Africa and its citizens. Here we exploit the regional price inefficiencies of crypto assets as a result of exchange control limits that exist in South Africa. And through the utilization of our clients' 11 million rand yearly offshore allowance, we trade crypto assets without ever being exposed to Bitcoin, 